Let's go ahead and get back up to uh, verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, that is when Jesus went up and was resurrected, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Then, then, now understand, if you look at your punctuation, you'll see that there's, a, there's an open bracket here. Uh, or, and so when you look at that, you realize this is not, this is not the main thought. So we, we could skip over this and tie the other verses together. But he, he just kind of went, you know, uh, he gave gifts unto men, and he gave some apostles. So you get down to verse 11 is where he picks back up that same thought. He kind of separated a little thought here and just interjected. It's kind of um, kind of like you're talking along. And, said, and, and by the way, yeah, yeah. and then you come back, okay? So, you know, you go from verse 9 to verse 11 is, is the main thought. But we'll go ahead. And, and by the way, now that he ascended, it is, uh, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. So that was just, Paul interjected that, you know, uh, and by the way, this is what happened. Yeah. Let's, so let's just go ahead and read 9 and then, I mean, uh, verse 8 and then skip down to verse 11. We're not changing the Bible. We're just going to keep a continuity of thought here. Paul interjected a by the way in there, okay? And, and that's, it's still Bible, it's still scriptural, but I don't want to lose what he's saying here. So let's read verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some um, evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, or and that word perfecting does not mean flawless, the, the Greek word that we translated perfecting here, does not mean flawless, it means mature, or maturing, growing up, okay? For the perfecting or maturing of the saints, what? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or mature man, uh, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, hallelujah, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, I hate to tell you this, not everybody that says, you know, that says they're a Christian, not everybody that says they're a minister of the gospel, not everybody that's on television, writes books, travels around, has tapes or MP3 series. Yeah, we don't have, we don't have tape series anymore. We've got MP3 series. All right, has the MP3 thumb drive they sell you with all their sermons on it. Not every one of them are for you. Some of them are greedy after filthy lucre. Yeah, true. Hello. Well, I'm just going to stay home and watch Christian television. You're going to be warped. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Now, I remember the day when Brother Bill was on the radio. <clears throat> when I first got saved down in Greenville, North Carolina, WBZQ, I think, I can't even remember the call letters of that station. A little AM, AM, on your AM dial, WBZQ. What's that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Cope would come on, and then Brother Bill would come on, and then Brother Hagen would come on, or vice versa. Bill, he was in the middle. He was, he was the cream filling that kept the Oreo together, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah, Brother Bill. So, I, you know, you just, you know listen, you just listen to the radio in the morning. You have Brother Copeland, you have Brother Hagen, Brother Bill on there, all preaching faith, and then you have some guy come on there and argue about what they were all wrong about. Yeah. See, they called themselves a Christian. They had the money. They let them on the air. So... Understand this, there are those who lie in wait with cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And the word cunning comes from a word that means trickster. Greek word that means trickster. Uh, people who would use two sets of dice and hold one and hide it and then roll a weighted die, you know, weighted dice or die, the individual that die, you know, weighted ones and roll them and, and, win, and win games and then they pick them back up, they put the real, real ones back out and nobody would know the difference. Okay? So that's where that Greek word came from. It comes from a word meaning a trickster. So there are tricksters out there. Say so there are tricksters out there. And listen, they're lying in wait. Now, what do you do when you lie in wait? You're waiting for the opportunity to find someone or, you know, uh, uh, find someone who's unprotected, unknowing, whatever, that you can attack and you can, you can overcome. All right? So to understand this, there are those, those kind of people out there. Now, I know. Well, we're supposed to believe the best of everybody. Now, I know you read, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 or uh, chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, out of the King James, go read it in some other versions. The Bible does not see, it really it does not mean or doesn't really carry the thought, love believes the best of every person. That's not really what it says. You know, you understand when you, King James used a word-for-word -word translation, you know, and, and sometimes you can't put the, the, the 
shaded words that would give it better meaning. Amplified says it better. Love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. See, love wants to believe the best. But look, some guy's got a gun to your head, get ready to pull the trigger. You can't believe he doesn't want to do it. He wants to do it, all right? Somebody's, you know, hitting you with a two-by-four, and you say, I, I just, love says he really doesn't want to hurt me. Yes, he does. That's why he's doing it, okay? But love, now listen, love is not ready to jump to the conclusion that everybody has ill motive or ill intention, okay? But see, the devil's used that on the church where, well, you just got to believe the best of everybody. They, they don't mean anything bad about it. No, the Bible flat out tells you there are people out there who are waiting and lying and wait to deceive you. Well, what's, what do we do? See, love is our, is our, is our um, motivator, but you still have to use wisdom. And when the Bible clear, clearly tells you something, you've got to understand it's there for a reason. Amen? And so you have to use that wisdom not, everybody say not, to get yourself in trouble. Okay? I mean, you know, and, and listen, it's amazing how many times the devil tells you you've got to walk in love. The devil will come by and say, you got to walk in love. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, people who don't even believe in God, don't believe in Jesus, don't believe the Bible. Well, aren't you Christians supposed to turn the other cheek? Yeah. You know, like that movie that time, remember that movie, the, the guy said he's supposed to turn the cheek, so he turned his cheek and he hit him and says, but it doesn't say what to do after that. So then the guy jumped on him and beat him. <laughs> now, we're, that's not where I'm not advocating that. All right. He says, here, but speaking the truth in love. Now, oh, here we go. See, now we're supposed to speak the word of God. We're supposed to speak truth, but it's to be motivated by love. We're not trying to, I got you, or we're right, you're wrong kind of thing. But <clears throat> we still have to speak truth. Now, see, here's, here's, where, the, here's where the world is coming against the church so hard. You know, you've got the agendas. You've got, you got the LBGT agenda out there saying, oh, you hateful Christians because you tell us we can't do what we're doing. You're full of hate. You're homophobes. Well, really, the Bible says to speak the truth in love. Your lifestyle, according to the word of God, is going to get you in hell. The Bible says, no, you not. They which practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So love tells me that I have to, um, did I say something weird or y'all mess around over there? My, my front. Why do we have Darth Vader on the front row? But he's bobbleheading. Okay. I'm, do I look like Darth Vader to y'all? I said, we're going to get Pastor Ed bobbleheads, not Darth Vader. He's, he's so confused. Vader is confused this morning. Uh, Clunk's still standing right there, I see. No, see, we're, no, for, for the church to say to someone, this behavior is enmity against God. It will separate you from God. And, and the end result is, if you don't repent and get right with God, it will take you to hell it's not homophobia. It's not hate speech. It is love speech. Because you're telling people, this, will, this is going to hurt you. Yeah. You know, we, we, we have a whole society brought up on, on uh, Spock's book. Uh, you know, not, not, not the pointy-ear guy, the, the doctor from the 60s. About your children being your friend. And not, te- not breaking their spirit. And not, don't tell them no. You can't tell them no. Why not? Because... The world wants to just unleash that whole generation of us, and they have. Oh, my. Anyway, we're to speak the truth in love. Everybody say, speak the truth in love. Why? That we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. All right. So we're understand that when people come into the kingdom of God, they get born again, they, become, they get saved, they get born again, they become a Christian. Amen. You know, you're not full grown. You might be 80 years old in the natural, but you're a baby spiritually. When you, when you, when you first come into the kingdom. Uh, even Peter says this over in 1 Peter 2, 2, look over there. <clears throat> we don't want you to take my word for it. We want you to take the Word's word for it. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to get me a new Bible. Both my Bibles, are, the pages are falling out of it. Hallelujah. Um, Peter says in verse 1, verse 1 of chapter 2, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 
uh, two one. Wherefore, lay, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes. Everybody say newborn babes. Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So God wants you to grow. Say, God wants me to grow. See, when you get born again, you're not, you don't, you come into the kingdom, you get born again, Jesus becomes your Lord. You pass from death unto life. The Spirit of God, you know, bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. I mean, you become an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I mean, all the cool stuff that happens, you're still a baby. See, when a baby is born into the world, it's still a baby. It doesn't get up and walk across the room when it comes out of the womb. Eventually it will. But it doesn't happen day one or day two or day three or day four. Usually happens around day 1,000 or something, you know, or 700 or something. You know, and the, you know it'll get it, the baby will get up and walk eventually. What? Well, now let's, let's talk about this. You see, what do babies need when they come into the world? They need the right environment. You can't take a newborn baby and just go out and throw it in the trash can and expect it to make it. People do it. That's why, because they're full of the devil. Their minds are demonized. Y'all hear you're going home. You know, I mean, to, t to take the most innocent of life and, and just, just treat it as, as, as refuse and garbage, that's demonized. That's, that's demonized thinking. Hello? They were talking about there's even no, they went out on a college campus about three months ago and did a survey and wanted to know what the college students thought about post-birth abortions. Post-birth abortions. And about 25 to 30% said they thought it was a good idea. Now, that's the same bunch that doesn't know who the president of the United States is and all that kind of stuff. But they're in college, and then they vote. Anyway, think about it. You know, yeah, post-birth abortions. You know, going, 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 baby comes out, we don't like the way, the gender, don't like the way it looks. It's only certain, it's, it, well, we're, we, we, have, we have the right to kill it because it's, you know, it's, it's not viable life or whatever. Well, that's who, you know, that's, that's the way the world thinks. That mind gets messed up. Okay? Now, you can't take a baby and throw it in the garbage can. You can't take a baby and put it out in the elements and leave it alone and expect it to make it. You know, you hear the miracle stories and somebody let the baby out and they found it three days later. You know, but four, four days, five days later, it's not going to make it. Eventually, without the right environment, that baby will die. Okay? See, as a Christian baby, you need the right environment. You need, you need uh, Jesus said, come out from among them and be ye separate. Yeah, but I got a witness to the lost. Let me tell you something. When you're a baby, you need the right environment to make it. See, when you become an adult, you can handle changing environments for, for a period of time. Hello? But as a baby, you can't. You've got to have the right environment. You've got to be nurtured. That's why, you know, you've got to be fed. You've got to be cared for. You're not going to, you, you've got to have that. That's why these people say you don't need to go to church. They're just, they're just, they're just of the devil. Why? Because they know in the, in the church is where you're going to get nurtured. The church is where you're going to get fed. The church is where you're going to get cared for. It's the environment you need. Hello. You know, that, all those things are important. And the right church, obviously. You need to be in a good Word of Faith, Holy Ghost church. Amen. Word church. Power, preach of the Word of God. Get full of faith in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. So Peter said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk. Now listen, let me tell you something. You don't need to grab Kenyon when you first get saved. I'm just be honest with you. You'll choke. You take, you, you listen, you take a, a three-day-old a three baby and go, get, go to Ruth's Chris and, and, and throw a steak up there and let it try to gnaw on that thing, it'll choke it. Now, you can sit over there and have it all day long. I mean, shout while you're doing it. 1,200-degree platter, hallelujah. Cook medium to medium, with hallelujah. Throw some butter on that bad baby. Let it just melt and drizzle all down on the pan and sizzle when it hits the pan. Woo! Who's taking us to Ruth's Chris today? All right. But that baby can't handle it. Why? Because the baby's not ready for it. That baby has to have milk. And let me be honest with you. I mean, you know, listen, uh, natural milk is the best thing for that baby. You know? I mean, you know, the world says, get that baby off the bottle, get them, off, you know, get them, on, get them on formula and get them off that within, you know, a year. Have them, you know, they can't even go in daycare now unless they're off the bottle at 13 months or 12 months. They've got to be off the bottle completely, off the bottle. 
before 12 months. That's government regulations. What happens? It thwarts their growth, proper, their proper growth. Hello? See, the devil wants to get you out of the environment. Oh, you got to do, listen, you got to go do something for Jesus. Yeah, well, go do something for Jesus while you're being cared for. And nurture, as a baby in the Lord, you got to grow to a certain point. You got you, you to get to adulthood to stand on your own. Satan has always tried, let's go back and study the Bible. What did he always try to do? Kill the babies. Hello? Well, God sent the death angel. That's because Pharaoh pronounced that curse and he reaped what he sowed. He went out and started killing all the Jewish babies. Hello? And that was the harvest of his, his attack against the people of God. It was not what God would have done in the first place. Had Pharaoh done something different, that wouldn't have happened. Well, God hardened his heart. Go read your Bible. Ten times the Bible says Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Then, at the end, it says God hardened his heart. He had ten opportunities not to harden his heart. He just kept doing it. That's all over here. Okay, so we've got to have the sincere milk of the word. If you're a baby Christian, and let me say something. If you've been saved 25 years and you're still a baby Christian, um, If you, look, uh, here's Greg. Greg's on the on second row. If Greg leaned over to Gina and, and, and said, honey, I, I need something to drink, and she reached in her purse and pulled out a bottle and then tested it on her wrist to see if it was warm enough and handed it to Greg, and he just leaned back in his seat this morning. Now, most of you would be going. Now, a couple, a couple of our, our, our extremely spiritual people probably run over there. Come out, you childhood devil. I mean, you know, they do something, you know, all right? I mean, but wouldn't that look funny? Greg over here, he's, he's in his 40s, sucking down on a milk bottle. I'm going to be honest, I feel funny sometimes using one of those cup, you know, the cups that have the lids on them. They're in coffee or whatever. Get, get, get that lid off. Let me get that stuff down, baby. I mean, you know, a sip, you know not a sippy cup. Well, they're adult sippy cups. They, got a fan, they call them turvis. You know, they're just adult sippy cups. But no, I mean, think about this. You know, I mean, you have an adult in here and somebody says, hey, well, it's time to go change your diaper. <laughs> I'm getting a whole lot of people who aren't really, you know, just go with me, guys. Okay, come on. Just flow with it, all right? Couldn't you at least got, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi or something? That's right. <laughs> See, as a, as a babe in the Lord, you've got you to drink milk. So you can, but you got to grow. you got to grow. But you need that environment. You need the church. You need the pastoral care. You need the, 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 the care of the saints. You need to be watched over and, and, and cared for till you can, as you, so you can begin to grow. Now, let me say this. Your growing process will always, always be a step of weaning from childish things and maturing in relationship to the other things as you go through life. Now, as my kids get older, you know, now listen, obviously we don't feed our kids on a milk bottle anymore. We still provide for them. But I don't make them eat. I don't, I, listen, I don't cut Jesse's steak up. Can't go. <laughs> Cap does. All right. I don't. I don't give them milk. And, you know, I don't get their tea, and I and I don't you know pour it down their throat. Say, look, here, open up, sweetie. You stay with Jessica. Jessica was the hardest one to get to eat. You had to make an airplane out of stuff. <laughs> open up. <laughs> she was hard. It was hard to get that child. I mean, she just. She wouldn't eat. She. You cannot pay her to eat garden peas now. You should have seen her as a kid. She used to shove them up her nose. Oh, yeah, just, I mean, just, anyway. But see, now, she did that. She doesn't do that anymore. You can't even get her to touch them, much less shove them up her nose anymore. But as a baby Christian, see, we, and this is, as, as other Christians, as people along the different path of life, you can't get upset with somebody who's a baby Christian for doing stuff that you don't do because you've grown up some. Amen? You have to recognize where they are. And you have to be, compassionate and caring about their stage to help them get down the road. Amen. 
They're going to do some bonehead stuff. They're going to say bonehead stuff. Amen. And that's what, you know, that, that is why we, they, they, we have pastors, you know, pastors, pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, what? To mature them, to teach the word. And let me say this. I could teach a message right now at this level that a babe is getting milk out of. You know, the, the wonderful thing about the word of God is it can be taught as milk or it can be taught as meat and, and, way you, and people can get different things out of it. Yeah. Amen. We, we can, we, now, we're talking about being born again right now. See, I can go and leave there and go talk about you're the righteousness of God in Christ. You're seated in the heavenly places in Christ. I mean, you know, you're blood, you know and start talking up there. That's, that's meat. Or I can be down here talking about, you know, that, it, that it, it nurtures you. It causes you to grow. See, to baby Christian, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're not going to hell. Isn't that good news? <laughs> How many glad you're not going to hell? Yeah. How many want to go to hell? Okay. How many are glad you're not going to hell? Because it was right. It was a mighty weak response both times, you know. That one little boy, little pastor, talking about, hey, who wants to go to heaven? And everybody in the church raised their hand and looked down. This little boy was on the front row, and he didn't raise his hand. He said, son, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, yes, pastor. He said, why didn't you raise your hand? He said, I thought you were getting up a load to go right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, we all want to go to heaven. Amen. You know, if you're born again, I mean, heaven's your destination. Well, you're leaving the earth, you're going to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, well, how do we, do, how do we grow with the Word of God? Well, we are born, we're, we're born by hearing the Word of God. We receive the Word of God. I, I mean, uh, 1 Peter 1.23 says, um, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God. So you're born by the Word. Amen. And then you receive the Word to grow from the Word. We want to grow with the Word. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. We, we, need, we need the Word of God so we can grow. Um, and, so, and it's important that you hear that Word and you, you're under that Word so that you can grow. Um, look over in Ephesians chapter 4. We already read this, but verse 14 says, That ye be no more, henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried by, about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craft, and it's whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, what did he say? He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers what? To teach the Word. To minister the word. What? So that, that, that people won't be children tossed to and fro. See, God wants you to grow to the place that you're able to discern right and wrong doctrine. Properly. And you're not tossed to and fro with it. You're not kicked around over here. You're not kicked around over there. <clears throat> I mean, there's some squirrely stuff out there, man. I mean, there is, some, there, there is stuff that makes the guy on Looney Tunes go... You know, get the big eyeballs. I mean, is that crazy? You know, I forget which, one, which character that is, the, that crazy thing on Looney Tunes. You know, you know what I'm talking about? You got the big eyes, his eyes go in and out on springs and all that kind of, anyway. There's some doctrine out there that'll make you do that. I mean, you, you, you're talk, I've talked to people before, and you're sitting there, and you feel like, I am talking to Rod Serling, and he's got the eyes of Ka. Trust in me. Oh, trust in me. How many ever saw Jungle Book? All right. Hallelujah. So we're born by hearing the word, glory to God. Uh, we grow from the word of God. Um, we grow up by speaking and hearing the word of Ephesians 4, 15, speaking the truth and love may grow up in him and all things. The word of God. I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to get around this. You need the word. If you find a preacher who's out beyond that thing, he's too far out. One preacher told uh, Dad Hagen a number of years ago, he said, <clears throat> he was sharing something he had, he had a revelation on. Let me tell you something, folks. When people start getting revelation, and you say, well, what's the scripture for that? Oh, I'm out beyond that. You're too far out for me. You're too far. You know, I mean, just start seeing if he's got dark sunglasses. And if his last name is Jones. I'm not talking about the basketball Jones. I'm talking about Jim. Are y'all here? Yeah, one, that one preacher, he said, oh, I'm, I'm way out beyond that thing talking about the Bible. Honey, if you're out beyond that, if you're, you start calling the Bible a thing and you're out beyond that, you're too far out. And you're going to mess people up. And if people can't give you the word of God, you don't need it. Why? Because the word of God is what you need. Amen. And let's face it, when, when you're a baby and you're a child and you're young and you're growing, you don't need uh, Twinkies for your meal. And they're back, and they've been frozen, so they have a longer shelf life. But that's not what you, you can't survive on Twinkies. 
I mean, I mean, you can live, you can live, but there's stuff in it. But you know what? I mean, you go, it's going, it's going to thwart your good growth. You will be. Yes, it will. Nathan shook his head no, because he, he didn't want to. He didn't want to give up on his, uh, on his Twinkie. He don't, you don't eat Twinkies. He, he's just aggravating. <clears throat> now, you, 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 know, you open up, how many love this? You open up the Gerber can, gar, jar, you know? Strained peas and carrots. Shove it in the kid's mouth. And they're going, mm, that's good. You're thinking, oh, oh, oh. Well, it beats the alternative of taking it and chewing it up and spitting it out and giving it to them. I mean, at least it's... Amen. Well, well the babies, see, they, they, there's nutrients and stuff they need in some of those things, but they can't swallow the whole... So you, you do what you've got to do to get the nutrients into them. See, and Christians, you need the Word of God. You don't need, you, you don't need all, this, all this, this puff and fluff. You don't need to listen to stuff where they don't give you any Bible. If people are preaching and they can't give you a scripture for anything they're saying, then you don't need to be listening to them. The God, I mean, listen, now, now I'm going to tell you something. The God told me, the God showed me, the God revelation is all statements designed to put them in a position of authority that you can't argue against. See, now people do it to me as the pastor. They'll come into my office and say, the Lord told me. What can I say? You're a liar? Thought about, kind of thought about it a couple times. You don't know what you're talking about. You wouldn't know the whole voice of the Holy Ghost if you came in and hit you in the head with a two-by-four. Well, you can't say those things. You want to. You might think it. They may walk out the door and you might say it. But the minute they say, God told me, they pulled, yes, they pulled the God card. And now you no longer have a voice because what you've got to say is, you've got to argue against God. Because yeah. if God told them that, anything you say is lesser than God, but well, well, can't, how can you have any wisdom? The Lord told me to do such and such. Really? And you're thinking, now listen, I mean, you know, you're sitting there thinking, now if they got in the pulpit, if they came to the church and said that, and it was wrong, I'd have to correct it. Now on an individual level, if they, you know, they're not going to listen to you anyway. Because if they come and tell you God told them, you may as well just, you know, be like what, what that song Jim Croce did a number of years ago. You don't spit in the wind. You don't pull the mask off the old Lone Ranger and you don't mess around with Jim. And then in the end it became slim. All right. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Because Jim got cut up. Anyway, you know, you know, you don't, you don't, when people pull the God card, you, you can't argue with it because they're saying God told them. There's preachers that do that all the time. God told me. God showed me. And they never give you a scripture. Well, he's the man of God. No, 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 no. Remember, there are those who lie and wait to deceive with cunning craftiness. And so that is why babes need the right environment. They need a protection. I remember when Jesse was a baby. I mean, we were new parents. We were, we were like over the top new parents. I mean, I mean, you get around certain people. There were three pointing right back at you. She's up here going. Oh, yeah. Janie showed me this picture yesterday of, of this, this new, this new uh, crib bassinet thing that hooks to the side of the bed level with your mattress with, with, a, with a cage around it except on the side where you're in the bed. I thought, man, I needed that when the kids were young. Because I pulled the, I pulled the little bassinet right up beside my side of the bed, and my hand stayed on their back all night. I never slept. They're going up and down. They're breathing. Okay, they're good. <laughs> Fell asleep. Oh, oh, are they okay? Okay, they're breathing. <laughs> oh, man, that was a daddy hand if there's ever been one. But I tell you, we come around people, you know, if we thought they had kind of some kind of devil, they wanted to hold the baby. Oh, no, she, she can't hold We let them hold them. <laughs> Got an eating devil, a smoking devil. Got a squirrely-eyed devil. Everybody has something wrong with them. Nobody got to hold the youngins. Your devil ain't getting off of my kid. Now, that may be extreme. 
You ain't getting no devils either. We had relatives we wouldn't let them hold. <laughs> Kate's going, that's great, man. I was crazy over my kids. Watched over them. Hallelujah. Okay. There was some guy hanging around and one of the kids and the, the girls and I told Janie, I said, you, now this is this confession. I said, you call them and tell them, get rid of them or come visit me in jail. Because my brother had already called me and said, I got the tarp and the shovels in the back of the truck where you want to meet. <laughs> and I was kind of halfway joking. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? We need to have that same care of our baby Christians. We need to watch over them and nurture them and guard them and protect them and, and, and give them the sincere milk of the word so they can grow. See, because one day as they continue to grow, you know, it's amazing that that, 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 little, that little bundle of joy comes into the world and all they can do is cry when it's wet and cry when it's hungry and sleep. And cry when you play picky boo and you don't, you don't come back on quick enough. Their world is very limited. And it's your responsibility to, to provide the environment, to nurture, to watch over, and to take care of so they can grow. But it's amazing each day as they grow, a little bit more each day, they mature, their bodies get bigger. Their, their, their expansion, all of a sudden, pickaboo don't work. How many, I can't do pickaboo with the kids anymore. It doesn't work. You know, it's like one day they look at you and say, Daddy, I see you're still there. Now, when they're little bitty babies, it's just, if you can't see your eyes, they think you're gone. Isn't that right? I remember one time, somebody, one, one, one of my uh, uh, relatives out there, were, they were spelling the word French fry in front of me. They, you know, I'm, I'm 20 plus years old. I can spell French fry. <laughs> Hello? But I couldn't at, at three? Now, Nathan said when he, got, when he get his kids, every time he rides by McDonald's, he's just going to reach back there and slap them. <laughs> so when they get older, when they come by McDonald's, they don't even want to get near it. They'll put it on the other side of the road. <laughs> They'll never be addicted to McDonald's. All right. So, but notice here, it says, by speaking the truth in love, they're able to what? Grow thereby. The word of God. See, you need the word. You don't need somebody who's got a cool ministry, who just talks about stuff and never gives you a scripture to substantiate what they're saying. They pull the God card. Well, God showed me. Well, you know what? There's no scripture of any private interpretation. If he showed you, he's going to give a Bible verse that'll back it up. Actually, it says that every word be in the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word be established. Not some isolated scripture, enough Bible that you can go through the Bible and say, you know what? This isn't somebody who's put the twist on it. There's enough Bible here. There's enough, there's enough Bible principle. There's enough Bible to substantiate that and say this is what it is. And babies need to be fed good things. And what, what do baby needs? Listen, that baby don't need to be studying when Jesus is coming back. They don't need to be studying Armageddon. Hello? They don't need to know about the mark of the beast. What do they need to know? They need to know their sins are forgiven. That God doesn't condemn them. That if you miss the mark after you get saved, Jesus will forgive you and wash you of your sin. You know, they need to be encouraged. They need to be nurtured and cared for. If they make a mistake, God will forgive them. You don't have to fall out and go, oh, if I, you know, because the devil comes. The first, time, the first time you sin after you get saved, the devil comes. See, if you had anything, you wouldn't have done that. That's what I tell you. It's amazing how, how spiritual the devil can get. Oh, if you were really saved, you wouldn't be doing that. I remember, I, 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 I remember when I got saved, um, July the uh, 11th, 1979. It was a Wednesday night, hot in Greenville, at the corner of Brinkley Drive and Brink Plaza Drive and Brinkley Road, at the first Pentecostal Holiness Church. Hallelujah. Brother Gentry wasn't there. They had, um, what was that man's name? You remember that? Oh, anyway. 
He was a Ph preacher who went to the Church of Christ because he, 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 he wanted to move around. He, he, anyway, he was just, he was, I don't even know what he preached. I don't. I, to this day, I can't tell you anything he said. Just remember him giving me the altar call, me going down the aisle, my grandma getting dancing all over the place. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Cause I, I was, and here, comes one of the, here comes one of the grandkids going to get saved, going to give his heart to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I remember what it was like to be a babe. I was going to make a point out of all that. But anyway. Yeah. But I was playing, I was playing softball. And actually, the reason I was there was I had been playing softball for when my brother worked, played for Burroughs Welcome's team, and they got me on the industrial league. Well, they played on Wednesdays. See, church league didn't play on Wednesdays. We had church. But in the industrial league, they played on Wednesdays because the fields were open because the church folks were playing on, play, at church. And then I had pulled a hamstring. And so I went to church, got saved, came back, said, well, Jesus, heal me. Praise God. I, they told me I was going to be in crutches six to eight weeks. I was playing in two days. Yeah. About two games later, came in from an inning. We had a horrible inning. And I, and I came in and said, what in the blank are you guys doing? Threw my glove. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm down at the end of the, the dug, well, fenced in, dugout, quote, dugout thing. Oh, Jesus, oh, you forgive me. Oh, yeah, you feel like, oh, God, I'm going, am I going to go to hell? <laughs> See, Pentecostals are Armenian. You got to get saved. You got to get born again again. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, buddy. I mean, like, like, you can serve God faithfully for 60 years. And two seconds before Jesus comes back, if you cussed and he came back and you hadn't repented, hell you are. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you are you're shipped to hell because you had sin in your life. I mean, extreme Armenian, you know, you got, they're, they're just as far the other direction as the Calvinists are on the other. All right. I'm a Calvinian now. <clears throat> We're somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, but I remember, I remember the first time I said, that, oh, God, Jesus, forgive me, forgive me. I, I said the word hell in the wrong context. You know? Oh, 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 just destroyed my witness. Oh, Jesus. Nobody even heard me. <laughs> you see, the devil will mess with your head. And so... <clears throat> I went to work and uh, told my co-worker, hey, I got saved this week. He said, hey, great. He went to Rock Church. They had a little satellite church. Remember Ann and John Jimenez? Well, they had a little satellite church down in Tarboro, North Carolina. That's the guy that was witnessing to me. I was working at lawn manufacturing programming, and he was, he was witnessing to me. And I came, hey, I got saved. Cuss me. I got saved. He said, now, look, they're going to tell you you got Terry for the Holy Ghost. See, we believe in Terry in the Pentecostal church. You go down and you just seek for the Holy Ghost, and you'd seek for the Holy Ghost, and you'd seek for the Holy Ghost, and you'd seek for the Holy Ghost. I knew one guy I'd been seeking for 15 years. Hallelujah. And then people say, oh, you'll, you'll appreciate it more if you get it. Anyway, you can use it a lot more. It's like waiting 15 years to get the Jeep or get it right away and use it for 15 years. Which one's better? I appreciate it more. No? You know? I could, have, I, mean, I could have had this 10 years ago. So uh, I remember going and, and uh, you know how the devil do you? Oh, you've, you've sinned. You've missed the mark. You're going to hell. You're not a Christian. That's not real. You know, then you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, listen, you, and we don't have time to teach it this morning. I can give you uh, so many scriptures this morning to show you right now that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the new birth are two separate experiences with God. Paul, having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and finding certain disciples there, Said unto what you know, said unto what uh, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said, We've not even heard of the Holy Ghost. He said, Well, what were you baptized? They said, Unto John's baptism. And then he preached the word of God to them. And uh, then he, and then he, they got, they laid hands on them, they got filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke with tongues and magnified God. Yeah. Amen. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. The people giving heed to him, both seeing and hearing the miracles which he wrought. Mm -hmm. Amen. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Amen? When the disciples, or the apostles, the disciples at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down might lay their hands on them that they might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for as yet he had fallen on none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now them folks are saved. Yeah. Let me tell you something. That was for Samaria, before Peter and John ever got down there, them folks were born again. Wow. They received the word of God. They had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They sent Peter and John down there to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. So I remember about a week later on the July the 18th, I, I got filled, oh, I, no, on, on the Sunday, that was Wednesday, that following Sunday, because Janie got saved on the 18th. Uh, 14th, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, the devil stopped telling me I wasn't saved. 
know what he starts saying? That speaking in tongues is of the devil. He didn't even mention that stuff until I got filled with the Holy Ghost. It was kind of like saying, hey, that's of me. <laughs> hey, man, that's what the devil's doing to you. I remember as that baby making that mistake and feeling so condemned. But you know what? Thank God for people who had the word of God. You see, we got to take baby Christians, and when they're struggling, say, hey, you know what the Bible says this? Words of encouragement, words of life, words of strength. Dad Hagen tells a story about one of the guys in his church. He, um, he got saved, you know, just, a, just a, I think he worked on the oil rigs or something. He got saved, and, and um, he had a temper. You know, people don't lose their temper day after they get saved. Why? Because you got flesh. You got to, it takes time to correct your flesh. How many found that out? Hello? Oh, my. It takes time to correct your flesh. It, it just didn't, it didn't just line up. As a matter of fact, Paul said he had to buffet it. He had to keep it under. That's a, it's a daily process keeping your flesh under. Amen. Amen. Some days you do good, some days you don't do good. What do you do when you don't good? You repent and go on. Amen. Now, you don't sit down and go, you know, it doesn't matter. It's all under the blood, so I don't even have to repent. That's hogwash. That's what we got one teaching out now. Oh, you don't even have to repent when you sin. Really? Is that why First John was? Oh, we don't believe First John when I was written to the church. Really? Did you know you don't you don't repent for sin to get saved? I'm gonna mess with your theology. Romans, the tenth chapter, the eighth, ninth, tenth verses says this: that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God's raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. Let me say, there's no way you can repent for all your sin before you get saved. There's stuff you did you don't remember you did. Hello? You can't list them all out and get them all. You come to a point you recognize you need his lordship. And he says, look, look, get your Bible out and go over there. Just run on over there. I'm not really that far off where I'm supposed to be. I'm kind of close. Because we're talking about what? Babes who got saved. Look in Romans chapter 10. Let's look down here. Verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall descend into the heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus, now one translation, the different translations say Jesus is Lord, you're confessing his lordship, and shall believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Did it say anything about uh, um, confessing your sin? See, the, sin, the sin, sin confession for the believer is after you get saved. In other words, when you miss the mark after you get saved, you repent for that. You confess it. Okay? For with, listen, verse 10. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What did he say confess? Jesus is Lord. See, when you're, when you're a sinner, you know what you do? This is not heavy, folks. This is, this is not a trick question. If you're not saved and you're a sinner, what do you do? Sin. It's real simple. You sin. You come to the point you recognize you're lost without God in this world, without hope in this world. You need Jesus. You confess him as your Lord. You believe in your heart God's raised us from the dead. And God cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Your nature is changed. Therefore, he who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. You become into right relationship with God. The blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness. What's that? All the sin you've ever committed. But not only in the, in the believer, in the New Testament believer, <clears throat> see in the old covenant, how did I get so far over here? I'm, I keep trying to run, but he's carrying me over here. We're going to go here. So under the old covenant, they'd bring a sacrifice every year, and it would atone. It was a temporary covering for all their sin. You know what happened next year? Had to do it again. Now, if we go to the Hebrews, the ninth chapter, we'll find out, you know, that, they had, they, that Jesus is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. That he entered in once and for all to obtain an eternal redemption for us. His blood's always at work. 
We're not atoned for. We use our terms a lot in the church. It is not a New Testament term. We are not atoned. We are washed. We are cleansed. We are born again. And the blood of Jesus cleansed you from your unrighteousness. Not only the acts of sin, but the very nature of sin. Now look at 2 Corinthians 5. <coughs> See, these are things you need to start telling babes. Hey, look, I know you messed up, but you know what? God's not holding that against you. God loves you. All you got to do is say, say God, I'm sorry. I should have done it. I repent. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Everybody say new creature. Now, one translation actually says new species of being that never existed before. Um. All things are, uh, old things are passed away. All things are become new. Let me ask you all something. How many here are born again? Say, you, okay. if you ain't, we'll get you. All right? When you got saved, did you forget your name? Did you instantly have the body of Charles Atlas or, uh, you know, what woman? Wonder Woman. Did you have the perfect physique instantly? Could you solve the equation of relativity for the universe. Thank you, Ben. Ben, yes, I could. <laughs> could you determine the absolute matter and weight, mass weight of the earth instantly? Instantly. You can fig figure it out. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Nathan, they're usually the phone calculators or something. In other words, when you got born again, you didn't forget who you were. You didn't get an absolutely different physique. You didn't get it from the altar. And all of a sudden, I mean, you look like, I mean, you know, man, I mean, like you've been in the gym uh, for 25 years and, and, and juicing the whole time. Made Ferregno look like Pee, Pee Wee Herman. Some of y'all will get that. All right. No. So he's not talking about a mental change. He's not talking about a physical change. Therefore, a man being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Was it talking about your mind, your soul? Was it talking about your body? Was it talking about your spirit? Your spirit was born again. Remember when Nicodemus came to Jesus? And said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, um, and, and you know, and um, Jesus, go back to John 3. He didn't say that. I, I got, he said, Thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do the miracles you do except God be with him. And then Jesus said, Truly I say to you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb? And all the women went, No! <laughs> Hello? And be born. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So Jesus tells us this with conjunction 2 Corinthians 5, that the, the new birth being born again is a spiritual birth. Amen. That the man, you know, and he goes, he goes Nicodemus, you know, you're a master of Israel, don't know these things. <clears throat> See, you're so carnal mind, you think everything's carnal. But over back, down back over to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You know, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God. Verse 18 starts out and says, and all things are of God. Well, what's he talking about? He's talking about your spirit. See, when man fell in the Garden of Eden, his spirit died. Remember, the Bible says, you, they, you, eat there, you shall surely die. Well, that's a Hebrewism. There was a Hebrewism. And that word, you shall surely die, that phrase did not mean you're going to, you know, because Adam, you know, Adam ate and he, he didn't go plunk. Remember that? He didn't go plunk. When Eve ate, she didn't go plunk. And if she had gone plunk, then that, Adam wouldn't have gotten in trouble. He lost another rib, but he wouldn't have gotten in trouble. It's a joke. <laughs> the women are not happy with me on that one. All right. 
Actually, the Bible says that the man was, was, in, was, uh, was in sin. The woman wasn't in sin. The man was. He was not fishing on the other side of the garden. They used to, I used to have a Sunday school picture in the quarterly and had Adam fishing on the other side uh, somewhere else in heaven when Eve, when, on the garden when, when Eve came up with the fruit. Oh, you've got to eat it. The Bible says he was, she turned and gave it to him who was with her. He was right there. He watched the whole thing happen. Could stop it. But when he died, he didn't die physically. It took him 900 years to die after that. He died spiritually. That's how instantly the light went out. They knew they were naked. Right then. We mean died spiritually. See, we always think death means to cease to exist. It doesn't. It, death is a biblical term. In biblical sense, it's separation. If you die spiritually, you're separated from God who is life. If you die physically, the human spirit is separated from the human body. It still exists. If you experience the eternal death, you will be eternally separated from God who is life. Okay? That's, that's, that's the biblical term does not mean cessation of existence. Now we, because we, we do funerals and we, we, we bury the body and we don't see them, we can't talk to them, we can't touch them, we can't, we can't have contact with loved ones and so forth, um, we, we get that cessation of existence mindset. But the truth of the matter is, they still exist. They, they're still living. They're still existing, okay? So, the spirit of man is the real man. 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, or 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 says, Paul said, I pray your whole body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. We are spirit, soul, and body. The part of you that gets saved, that gets born again. We know it's, we, listen, we know it's not the mind because the Bible says, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul, not your spirit, your soul. Your suke, Greek suke, the soul. James 1, 20, 1, 22 it says, receive with meekness the engrafted words is able to save your suke. See, the word for spirit is pneuma. Greek word for spirit is pneuma. Greek word for the soul is suke, which we get, you kind of get psychology from. Okay? Your suke, your soul. See, James wrote to the church and told them to receive the word of God to save their, or make whole or restore. The word say, sozo, doesn't just mean get born again. It carries a broader meaning than that. The Sozo Word Group entails not only spiritual salvation, but physical healing. Amen? The word, actually, the word translates, translates heal or make whole in many places. And you say, if you put save in there, you know, um, a lot of times we'd say, if they use the word save instead of healed or made whole, it wouldn't make sense. So the, the Greek word sozo means to save, <clears throat> to make whole, to heal, to restore, bring soundness. Amen. And so you receive the, the word of God to make sound or whole your soul, your, your mind. So your mind didn't get born again. You have to, that's a process. Be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The mind has, goes through mind renewal. And babies, that's why they need the word of God. Their mind gets renewed. Their flesh, you know. And then Paul said, I, I keep my body under, I buffet it. Ephesians, the first chapter, says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Your body gets, it says, until the day of the purchase redemption. Your body didn't get saved. How many found that out? Some of y'all are going to find out when you leave here and go to lunch, your body ain't saved. Hello? You run over to Grandover, and you go, oh, you can eat buffet. Man, they got a dessert bar up there, man, that, that, that make you, I mean... You just got to go to the bathroom and slap you. Can't even go, you ain't got time to go slap your mama. You just got to go slap yourself. <laughs> I'm telling you. Are you here? You're going home. But you know, we find out our flesh isn't saved. We'll have people come in here and shout on Sunday morning and walk out and cuss on Tuesday. I've had them come in my office and cuss. You're talking about somebody else in the church and they're cussing. Whoa! No, I'm not saying. I told the story about the husband and wife who went to marriage counseling that weren't saved came and started cussing. Using God's name in vain, I had to sit and say, oh, what? Well, stop. This is a church. I mean, I don't think I can help you guys. You need Jesus. Do you want Jesus? No? Okay, I can't help you. But I have Christians come in your office cussing about other Christians. What is that? They ain't keeping their flesh under. Now, let's go back here. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. See, your, your soul didn't get be new. Your flesh didn't get be new. What did? Your spirit was born again. 
your spirit became alive unto God as a newborn babe. It has to grow. You have to renew your mind. You got to keep your body under. But your spirit has to grow. The more it grows, the more it can exercise authority and domination over the soul and the body. The carne, the flesh. Remember, Brother Cope, we used to call people meatheads? Or carne meat comes from the word carnal, meaning, I mean, carnal comes from the word carne, meaning meat, so he called them meatheads. Because somebody got on him. Calling call other people meatheads. So we understand the soul has to be renewed. The body has to be kept under, but the spirit has to grow. So when you get born again, you're still going to think stupid stuff. You'll open your mouth and something will come out and we'll all go, what? Well, I believe. Well, okay, why do you believe that? See, that's where the part of that nurturing comes in, of helping that baby grow with the word of God, teaching them what the word says, bringing them along. Yeah, that's what we're going to do in one, one of these classes we're doing on Sunday mornings at 9.30 about school of the Bible. is called Foundations. Babies need foundation. Young Christians need foundations. They need fundamental teaching. You know, hey, you're not going to hell. That's, a, that's important to know. How many, how many, how many when you guys got saved and, you know, you kind of, the way, the way to sin rolled off your life, not just sin, but sin nature, rolled out of your life? I was kind of heading that direction to get quite over there. When you got born again, it wasn't just that you were forgiven of your sin. You, listen, we use this term in the church. How many of you ever heard the term, um, I'm just no sinner saved by grace? How many of you ever heard that term? How many believed that term? How many know that's not in the Bible? That is not a Bible term. Find it. Right, go ahead, find it. I challenge you. I double dog dare you. Now, I'm going to save you a lot of time. It ain't in there. <clears throat> it is the mindset of an, un un uh, an unrenewed mind that we're sinners saved by grace. Actually, we're the righteousness of God. I was a sinner. I was saved by grace through faith, that not of myself, it was the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But I became at that moment the righteousness. What is, what is righteousness of God? Oh, you say, oh, you're, you, you say you're righteous. How, and I saw what you did last week. Look, righteousness is not based on what I did. It's based on what Jesus did. Righteousness means right relationship with God. Now listen, Nathan's my son. Now, if Nathan goes out this afternoon and does a boneheaded thing, and he does sometimes, probably sometimes I don't know about, he doesn't stop being my son. Now, his act may be a point of, uh, of contention or separation in our fellowship until he repents, or I beat it out of him. But he doesn't stop being my son just because he... Now, he can grow up later on in life, and if he wants to, he can go change his name, and he can renounce our family and, you know, and, and, and curse us and say he has nothing to do with us. That's, I mean, he wouldn't do that. He does a good thing when he sees it. <laughs> but, he, see, he's my son. Just because he messes up doesn't mean he stops being my son. Just because you mess up doesn't mean you stop being God's child. Now, let me, I'm not preaching eternal salvation. Because the Bible teaches clearly in Hebrews 11 that there are certain things you can do where you can do just like Adam and, and, and boot yourself right out. But it's not a baby Christian that does it. It's not a, a child, teenage Christian that does it. If you go read that, you go read that. And I, we, we have a friend, Janie and I have a friend, or someone we know now. They, they, they may have done this. They were born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, prophesied, came to church, fell in the Word of God. I mean, quote, Bible, I mean they, were, they were on fire for the Lord. Today they cursed the blood of Jesus. And how shall he who counts the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified as an unholy thing? And he goes on to say, basically, receive, receive, receive repentance. He's done despite. The Bible says they, the person that does that has done despite to the spirit of grace. And there remaineth no more sacrifice for him. Now listen, that's not a baby Christian. When you read Hebrews 11... I mean, Hebrews 6, it says, that, you know, they're, they're born of God. They've tasted the good word of God, tasted the powers of the world to come. I mean, it goes on this, all this stuff where they, they're mature Christians, okay? Well, see, baby Christians need to know that, you know, they cuss three weeks after they get saved. They're not going to hell. 
Now, what are you? Don't tell them it's okay. Say, look. Now, First John one nine says, if you confess that before the Lord and repent for it, He forgives you. It's okay. So, what do you do? Teach people to, to teach the baby Christians to get right quickly. Don't let it hang around. Don't be condemned. Don't run away from God. Run to God when you mess up. Amen? Maybe we ought to start playing that Bee Gees song. Run to me whenever you sin. All right, anyway, how many, remember, how many remember run to me? <laughs> okay. You get in for youth tonight. That's right. See if you can do anything with him. Look over at Hebrews chapter 5. We're going, to, we're going to, try to try and find a place to quit. So the babe has to begin to grow. Remember, you're born again. Your spirit gets born again. You, 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 we have the right environment. We have the right nurturing. We have the right care. We give them the right kind of food so they can grow. Amen. Look at Hebrews 5, 13. For, um, 13 12. For when the time you have uh, ought to be teachers, you have need to be one to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and it has become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a what? Babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of the use have their senses discerned, exercised to discern good and evil. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto maturity or perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith toward God, doctrine of baptism, laying on of hand, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. So there, so we, we get into some of the fundamentals. See, babies just need to know about, you know, Jesus is coming back. You're forgiven. We lay hands on the sick. We lay hands on people given for the Holy Ghost. Lay hands on the sick to get them healed. These are, these are, we teach this almost some, like major doctrines, and they're, they're supposed to be fundamental doctrines. Amen. I was quoting this a little bit earlier, so let's go ahead and read it while we're here. We'll close. Verse 4. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, tasted the good word of God. That's mature Christians. And the powers of the world to come. If they should fall away. Now listen. You can't say they were never saved. How do you know? They were once enlightened. They, you can't fall away if you never were there. If they should fall away to renew themselves again unto repentance, seeing they crucified in themselves the Son of God afresh and put him into an open shame. Now, that's not good. I said, that's not good, is it? There was, there, there's a qualification. Well, see, babes, they'll come in and say, I committed the unpardonable sin. No, you didn't. Yes, I didn't know you didn't. Yes, I didn't know you didn't. The, God told me you didn't know. The devil told you you did. We need, to, we need to just love on them. Amen? Help them grow. <clears throat> what happens to the babes? Well, they see, eventually, in, in, in a little in, in a period of time, they'll start weaning from the bottle. They'll get, out, they'll get out of their diapers. Thank God. That's always a wonderful day. I mean, they had success at the porta potty. Woo! And then when it's regular success, you're just shouting all the way to the bank. Hallelujah. We'd be all the way to the bank. No more pampers. Yeah. Amen. I use real diapers. You really shout then. <laughs> that, that thing sitting over there with all that stuff in it. Eat some, mama. Honey, what glory. Hallelujah. But see, they'll, 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 begin, to, they'll begin to wean. They'll start, they'll start trying to get up and walk. And see, everybody wants that kid to walk. So they start walking. They, oh, my God. It's usually what's the next words. Why? Because then they're into everything. When they're crawling, you can keep up with them. When they start walking, it's a whole new world. Get three of them going around the house. The oldest one takes advantage of you. Got, when you got one in each arm and there's a third one loose, you're in trouble. <laughs> Amen? Well, but as, as they grow, see, and they'll start walking. And you know how it's funny to watch the, the new walk when they start walking? Because they're, they're just stumbling forward. You ever notice that? That's how kind of like Shannon still runs. She kind of just leans over and she, anyway. But you know what? Eventually they get, they get to where they hold their balance well. They can go up and down steps. It's funny to watch when they first start walking. They'll take a step, and if they just get a little off, you get what you say. You go, nothing, you, nothing can stop it. It's going to happen. And they, boom. Eventually they get where they don't do that. 
unless they trip over something. Otherwise, they, they don't do that. We won't talk about tripping. They're growing. What, what causes the growth? They desire the sincere milk of the word. We gave them the right environment. We nurtured them with the word of God. You've got to nurture them with the nerd, not your opinion. They need the word. They need to be taught from the word, given scriptures about God forgiving them. They need to be given scriptures about different things. So they can, they can, they can, that can be part, become part of their life and they can grow. And then you give them more and you get, they get, you know, it's amazing when you first get saved, you, you th how many think you thought you knew everything? I remember when I first got saved, I used to go to church and we didn't have, and I, I still do it on here. But when I first got saved, I used to go to church with a Strong's Concordance, an Amplified Bible, and a Rumbly Bible. Now, Rumbly Bible was Ms. Rum Sister Rumbly sold Bibles that had the ASV and the King James combined and all kind of studies. And it was this huge, it would choke a mule. Big Bible. It wasn't quite as big as a family Bible, but it was big. And I had a Fiat Sports Spider convertible. And I put those on the th dash and it took up the whole dash. I'm telling you, the Strong's by itself took half the dash. And I'd come into church like this. And say three weeks. I knew it all. I didn't know my head from a hole in the ground. I still thought the Lord helped those who helped themselves in the Bible. So what happened? As I grew, became more familiar with the scriptures, as I, my mind was renewed, I became, see, I began to grow. And I didn't just walk around thinking I knew everything. I stopped carrying all that stuff up to church at one time, eventually. Like I didn't walk in with big Bibles and all that stuff. Brother Bill was supposed to be a sight. He used to carry some kind of big Bible and a pouch on his yeah, round campus. Hallelujah. We did a lot of things as babes. You know, we thought we knew everything. We didn't, you don't need, why? Because your world was so small. Your perspective of, the, of being a Christian was so, and let me say something. As you grow in your perspective of being Christian, narrow is still the way. Jesus is still the answer. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. You don't change those things. But you begin to take on a broader understanding of how everything works in relationship to the walk with the Lord and so forth. And how you walk out. And how that, you know, when your world was <clears throat> being carried around by mom and daddy and then you crawled and you, you found you, your world began to expand. But all the things you were taught as the babe Fill in, filter, uh, fit into that, that process of growing. And then as you begin to walk, and then you, the world becomes bigger, then they say all the things you've been taught up to that point fit into relationship with the new world you're exploring, but you, you still have the right environment, you still have the right nurturing, you still have the right food, and you continue to grow. Amen. And then you become, you know, eventually, we're, we're going to we'll come back to you here tonight. We're going to talk about uh, maturing individually and as a body. See, the body of Christ has to mature. You know, I'm going to take, can I make a real honest statement here? We're real close. When, when the word of faith teaching began, we were really immature in a lot of ways. Because what everybody saw, they saw they could have what they say. And what were they, they saying? Cadillac, house, car, this, that. It was all about them. The mature church comes to the point that says, we need to use our faith to win the lost to extend the kingdom of God. God doesn't want you not to have it. See, that perspective of the world still is, is, is there, that God wants to bless you. You just don't focus everything on you getting all the stuff. God will take care of you. God will meet your need. God is your need. He's your caretaker. Say, God's my caretaker. But you, you, you'll come to a place in your walk with the Lord where you understand that it's not all about you getting stuff. Your kids usually realize that when they get out and get on their own, and all of a sudden, they got to pay the bill. The electric bill was how much? Get that air conditioner on 82. See, they're at home, it's down on 63. Mom and daddy's paying for it. I came in the house a week or so ago, I walked in, and I'm telling you right, I think I saw meat hanging in the upstairs hallway. I mean, you know, I used to work in a restaurant. We had walk-in coolers. You know, it's like, this is a walk-in cooler. <laughs> Hello? There's a hog hanging down here and beef down. I mean, you know, as we launch out and as we grow and we expand and we mature, 
we're able to become a more of a blessing. It's our job as the older rich Christians to help the younger ones get there. And then we're to keep going forward and learning that, you know, it's, you, know you might have to go to a uh, how, how we reach the world seminar instead of how do I get rich overnight seminar. That one over big. Yeah, don't get upset. The baby Christian who's going to learn how to get rich, they've got to learn how to prosper. They've got to learn how to be healed. They've got to learn how, they got to walk in things. But you're, it's time for you to go on. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to move forward. Amen? We're going to grow up. I said we're going to grow up. But it starts, let me say something. This is really interesting. The sincere milk of the word will help you grow, but then you move on beyond the milk and you move to the meat of the word. How can it be both? It is. How? It is. Sometimes you've got to forget about the how and just take it. It is. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for our time together. Thank you that Jesus is Lord. Thank you that you've helped us uh, come to an understanding that we, we, we need to grow. We need to grow up. There are different stages of growth, and we're going to grow. And, Father, I thank you that as we, as we move down this path individually, corporately, we'll be more, more effective and more successful in the kingdom and for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're about to bow your heads for a moment. If you're here this morning and you're not born again, would you raise your hand? Now, that we talked about that earlier in the service, you know, that you must be born again. If you're here this morning, you're not born again, and I don't mean, I'm not asking you if you've ever joined a church, shaken a preacher's hand, been water baptized, uh, been, had first communion, big Christian, um, you know, joined the Sunday school, you know, shook, squeezed somebody's hand. The Bible says you confess Jesus is Lord. And if you've never been in that place in your life, in your heart, where you acknowledge his lordship over you, and you've, uh, and you've believed in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead, he said that would cause you to be saved. If you've never had that kind of a walk with the Lord or that place, would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Okay, all right. Say, well, Pastor, I've done that. You know, I know that. But you know, I did just like the product of someone that I got up, took my inheritance, went out into the world and spent it on riotous, not righteous, but riotous living. You're backslidden. You're not right with God. You know it. Now, not, not that you're not his child, but you're not walking in relationship and fellowship or fellowship with him. You know it. The sin between you and the Father. There's something between you and the Father what your heart's condemning you. And he says, if our heart condemns us not, then have we confidence toward God. What do we do? We repent. The blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Anybody here this morning, you're backslidden. All right. Third call. Last one this morning. Pastor Ed, I'm here. Love God. But I have yet been baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit just like they did in the book of Acts. They sent Peter and John down there to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Say, well, I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost, and I want to be. I want all God has. So when we raise your hand, we'll minister to you, lay hands on you, get you filled with the Holy Ghost. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, look up at me. Stand up. We just want to make sure we don't want to see anybody out the door without, without being in their places. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I like it better if you were preaching on why I'm going to get rich next week. Well, we need to talk about things like this. You know, people in different places, they need to know all the, all the whole thing, the, everything we teach and believe from the Word of God. Not just what's going to get you on your next, next level. Hallelujah. Because somebody said that if you go to another level, you get a new devil. And I, don't, I, don't, I don't like that. I just don't like that statement. That, that statement bothers me. It was one, one, and I know it's a good minister, and I like their ministry, but I, that statement, the new level, new devil. I ain't going to confess that. Hello? The next level, I'm prepared. Next place I go in God, I'm equipped. Hello? Some people, people post that on their Facebook. New level, new devil. What are you posting that for? Why are we going to glorify the devil? And this, they, what they're doing is they're whining. I'm having a rough week. We mean new level, new devil. 